pleases me. No act is more sacred than consecrating a site in the blood of one's enemies. The rest of the dam is fully under our control. A few pitiful holdouts remain, but their time is short. The General was the last source of concern. With their commander dead, the NCR will pull out of this region, allowing our conquest to continue westward, unopposed for a time. The Legion will swell with the number of slaves we will claim from this place, and the tribute we gather will fund further campaigns. Perhaps in time I will be granted the honor of conquering the land known as California, but for now we rest. Know that your efforts are appreciated and will not go unrewarded, but we can speak of that later. For now, come, we must see to the burning of the dead. And so the courier who had cheated death in the cemetery outside Good Springs cheated death once again, and the Mojave Wasteland was forever changed. The Legate is crowned as the new Caesar. He entered the Strip as though it was a military target, destroying anyone who resisted him. The Legion brutally occupied all major locations, killing and enslaving a large amount of the population. Under the Legion's banner, civilization, savage as it was, finally came to the Mojave Wasteland. The Legion marched over the Hoover Dam with the help of one who was as brutal and merciless as the worst of them, the Courier. Caesar honored her with a golden coin, minted in celebration of her contributions and distributed throughout the wasteland. Without organized leadership, the remaining boomers slowly drifted away, leaving Nellis Air Force Base to be flooded by prospectors and scavengers. All of the boomers accumulated knowledge quickly scattered, and their existence slowly faded from memory. Buried beneath tons of rubble, the Mojave chapter of the Brotherhood of Steel was no more. Those few who were outside the Hidden Valley bunker when it was destroyed settled into new lives, or headed west to find a new chapter to join. The fiends attacked Camp McCarran during the Second Battle of Hoover Dam and suffered heavy losses. Caesar, unimpressed with their performance and their dependence on chems, had them exterminated. After the Legion's victory, the new Caesar learned the followers had defamed the original Caesar's noble origins. The followers of the Apocalypse were hunted down and exterminated. An old Mormon fort was turned into a pile of rubble. The Legion, preoccupied with its acquisition of New Vegas, scarcely took notice of the town of Good Springs. Many locals moved on, fearful of Caesar's long shadow. Only the old and the stubborn remained. As reward for their loyal service, Caesar forcibly integrated the Great Khans into the Legion. The sick and elderly were killed, the women sold as wives to ranking officers, and the tribe's identity was annihilated. Though many Great Khans mourned the death of their tribe, many more were ultimately satisfied with their revenge against NCR. After their victory at Hoover Dam, Legion troops rolled through Freeside. The kings tried to fight back, but most were killed, and the rest fled into the wasteland. Most powder gangers at the correctional facility fled into the wasteland rather than face the advancing forces of the Legion. Those brave or foolish to remain were killed or crucified by the merciless legionaries. Armed with a wide array of improvised explosives and stolen weapons, the Vault 19 powder gang tormented the Mojave wasteland for years. Citizens of the NCR were favorite targets, and they always suffered the worst fates. Hot-headed to the end, Sheriff Myers chooses to oppose Caesar's takeover of Prim with a standoff. Though the citizens take out a few legionaries, the town quickly falls to Caesar, its citizens utterly wiped out. And so the courier's road came to an end, for now. In the new world of the Mojave Wasteland, fighting continued. Blood was spilled, and many lived and died, just as they had in the old world. Because war, war never changes. <laughs>